It's been a huge privilege to be part of this centenary celebration. Merton's been so important to me for as long as I can remember since my teenage years, and to see that this legacy is still alive and affecting people throughout the world, and beginning to draw in a new generation as well, that's, that's been one of the really encouraging things about these few days. I think the things that I'll remember are the number of young scholars who've been here, people who've been encouraged to come, who've been helped to come by bursaries and scholarships, and who represent, of course, the next generation of enthusiasm about Merton, who will spread the word about this. And I've been really touched by some of their stories and some of their expressions of how they came to be interested. One young woman from China talking about the impact that Merton has made on her as a Chinese Catholic. And the second thing, I think, has been the extraordinary quality of some of the presentations which have taken us right into the heart of both the individual crises of struggle and meaninglessness and the search for, for God, and the social crisis we're in the middle of. Merton's genius is that he holds together the way in which the personal crisis and the social crisis belong together. They can only be resolved when we understand that it's out of the depth of contemplative silence that we begin most effectively to address the injustices and the imbalances of society. We've really been reminded of that with tremendous moral force, I think, in the last few days. So a wonderful experience for which I feel really grateful. It's been a delight to meet all these people, a delight to see that this hugely important figure is still being read, revered, thought through, argued with, appreciated, and I give thanks for being here.